I'm throwing back the curtain. I want to see the wizard. What the hell is my slave doing? Anyway, I'm here with Salad in the Astrology set, and welcome back to I Played a Thing, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, New Game Plus Abridged. Last time off screen, I did chat with Kale the Cartographer and get the house key from him, so he should be back here. And one other thing regarding the skeleton in the basement. There's a little bit of a change now that we're in New Game Plus, so we'll take a quick look at that. And where the hell is Kale? I did exhaust all his dialogue, he really should be here. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I'm really kind of bewildered. Anyway, if we go down here, we see that there are now two skeletons. And yes, the number of skeletons down here will mirror what uh, new game cycle you're on. Up to seven, I believe. And they do hit hard with that new game plus damage. And thrusting weapons aren't particularly effective against them, so they can take a beating too. Not to mention, I'm still getting used to the S-Dock a bit. That was far more of a production than it should have been. But now that there are two skeletons down here, we can get two reliable human effigies out of them. Now at this point I wasn't sure whether it was the new game cycle or the bonfire intensity of the far fire that determined the number of skeletons. So I headed back to the fire, did that thing which can not be undone. And went to take another look. Yep, three skeletons. So it is not the new game cycle specifically, just the bonfire intensity of the far fire. Which is too bad, because my skeletons are now out of sync with my new game cycle. Oh well. We'll just finish up with business here. Maybe make things a little more inviting for Kale if he ever decides to show up, and oh yeah, I definitely have some uh, practicing to do with my new choice of weapon. On the bright side, now that we're at Bonfire Intensity 3 for Majula, we can go here to Malin's place, and in his little attic loft here, we will find the Moon Butterfly Shield. And in his inventory now, he will have the headpiece. But it's a little too expensive for us right now, so we'll have to come back and complete the set later. And our journeys today are going to take us to Hate's Tower of Flame. And I've really been kind of sweating this section because this is perhaps the most changed place in New Game Plus. Lots of new enemy placements, some of which are quite nasty. I do like the thrusting sword backstab animation. Nice and shanky. I wonder how there got to be a message and some bloodstains over there. I suspect hacks. Anyway, I did some co-op there, and we now have enough souls to pick up the butterfly hat, so that's all taken care of. Thanks for the purchase. As usual, I will put the co-op session at the end of the video. Alright then, back to the tower. And here I decided to try out how Dark Orb Spam would work out against a Hade Knight. And the 
the answer seems to be fairly well as long as I'm careful about my distance and don't let him get in and start chopping on me while I'm trying to dark ball him. That's pretty decent damage. Wake up. I gotta watch out for that third swing of their combo. They don't do it very often, but I don't have much time to get out of the way if that's gonna happen. All in all, though, the wizard reapproach is not too bad. And we're going to pull down the first of the switches to raise the platforms around the arena for the Dragon Rider. And this is the part I've been really sweating. You remember this part where you can have an honorable duel with the greatsword, old knight in the middle, and then the others will come at you? Well, there's a new enemy added here, and it's that great hammer guy on the right. That asshole will not respect the honorable duel, and will trigger as soon as you go up against the greatsword guy, so you have to deal with them both. And you can't pull him, or else all four of the old knights in this area will come at you. Yeah, this part can be difficult even with my normal melee approach, and so I'm expecting it's going to be a real bastard here. Oh, wow. I didn't expect it to go wrong that quickly. Round two, fight! This time I brought along Soul Greatsword, which should be effective in hitting them both. We'll see how that works out. Well, it is good at hitting them both, but I don't think I like that amount of damage for the uh, amount of casting time it takes me. Don't think that's going to prove quite effective enough, at least when it comes to old knights, who don't seem to be hurt especially badly by magic damage. Let's see. So far, the trusty old Dark Orb seems to be working out better for us than just about anything in most circumstances, so let's give that a try. And I'm going to be prioritizing the old knight with the Great Hammer here, Reason being, this newly placed enemy for New Game Plus is not going to respawn, whereas the standard Greatsword Old Knight, he will. So as long as we can get rid of the Hammer Guy, even if we die afterward, that's going to make our future attempts quite a bit easier. And now we've done so, so the most important thing here has been accomplished. Yeah, and Mr. Greatsword, I think we can just finish off with the S-Dock. Yeah, that worked out okay. Now we've got another new Greatsword guy there. This is another one that will not respawn, so I'm going to go ahead and pull him. I wasn't sure if the Hay Knight over there was one of the ones that will always activate when you approach. As it turns out, he's not. He's one of the ones that will only activate after killing the Dragon Rider. So, I could have wandered in here and fought him on that platform and been just fine, but... Better safe than sorry. And when he doesn't have a hammer guy backing him up, the greatsword guy here isn't too bad, so... Yeah, we should be fine just taking him out with the standard pointy poker approach. I'm just taking out the sleepy Hade Knights as we go along because I don't want to deal with them when I come back through. Oh, I'm just do at least your two hitter and then we'll blast you in the face. I don't think I'm ever gonna get tired of that hex sound effect. Vroom, ping. Quite satisfying, really. <clears throat> I 
Now, as I head down to the platform here, I'm being cautious because I remember there is a new Red Phantom that has been added for New Game Plus. But he doesn't seem to be coming out just yet. So we'll deal with the Great Hammer Dude in melee. Save a little bit of our magic reserves. I am definitely liking the speed of the S-Dock. It's good for interrupting enemies, getting lots of little pokes in. The individual damage of each hit isn't great, but getting each hit in is quite a bit easier than with my usual habit of giant weapons. At this point I'm really kind of wondering where that Red Phantom is, but I'm sure we'll find him eventually. In the meantime, we'll just do our standard looting. Yeah, at this point I'm really confused as to where that new NPC enemy is. Normally, NPC invaders don't work according to your humanity versus hollowedness, but I popped an effigy there just to be safe because I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And then I said, fuck it, and just went to go pick up Masterless Gl uh, Glencore and fight the boss. Oh, there we are. He was guarding the summon sign. This guy could be considered a Red Phantom Executioner because he is wearing the Executioner's set and wielding the Executioner's Great Lance. Now, normally I'd be able to go a little more toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy because I'd be wielding a longer weapon, but his range is kind of messing with me here. If I could get past some of his initial pokes, I could probably stunlock him a bit with the uh, rapid strikes of the S-Stock. There we go, a little bit of that. But there I ran down my stamina a little bit more than I perhaps should have, and I had to back off and get some of it back. And he took advantage of the opportunity to nearly poke me off the edge of the platform. And holy shit, he decided to remind me there that Heavy weapons, uh, a lot of their attacks will have a super armor uh, capability, and they can just poise right through your attacks. Oh well, time for the rematch. Tried to grab Glencore there real quick to make it a little two-on-one, so maybe I could fling some magic at him, but couldn't quite get the button press off in time. So we'll have to make it a proper duel. I guess it's more honorable that way anyway. Yeah, fighting human enemies with the S-Dock, definitely something I have not had much practice with. But we'll get better with time, right? Well, I bloody well hope so. Ah, that's super armor, though. Didn't quite feel confident taking this guy on with ranged magic, either, because he's got that big lance charge. I'm just looking for my opportunities to get my pokes in... like that. Just a few more stabs ought to do it. There we go. Interesting, we get a token of spite out of that. My s stock's in pretty lousy shape. Its durability doesn't seem brilliant. I'll probably get a uh, little more friendly with repair powder than I have been on my first run. 
And so we will pick up Masterless G and get ready to fight the Dragon Rider. Howdy, Glenn. Now, according to my notes, the Dragon Rider does not like fire and lightning, above all. He's a fairly slow and easy guy to duel, so we're just gonna go with an augmented melee strategy this time. Chime up a little Sunlight Blade. And go for it. And it's about this time that I realize I forgot to actually pull the second switch in the dome. So we have a little bit of a death drop at the edges of the arena. But at least we brought up the first stone circle, so it's not as small as it could be. And I am liking that damage on the lightning enhanced S-Doc. I don't think he's especially strong to dark either, so we're getting a little of our dark damage as an additional bonus on him. He is a sluggish one. None of his strikes are particularly swift. Gotta watch those backswings, though. And simple as that. Maybe it would have been a little more interesting to go with Pyromancy, but... Oh, what the hell. I need to get more dueling practice in anyway. And here, when we meet with Lucia of Lindelt, I accidentally cut off the beginning of it, but it turns out when you talk to her with a lot of faith, she gives you a little bonus. Go on and seek greater miracles. With your faith, you deserve no less. <laughs> That's an unusually generous and sincere gesture from someone as crooked as our dear Lucia. And I honestly had no idea that happened. That's why I accidentally skipped past the first part of that dialogue. I expect without to play. Sorry. No need for. That's one of the nice things about playing new styles in this game. You're always learning things. Oh, well, we've got a level's worth of souls now from defeating the Dragon Rider, so I'll pop back to Majula real quick, like. And let's see, what do I want? Emerald Herald, what do I want? I think I want... Another bump to my HP. Yeah, that sounds about right. During the learning process, I'm definitely going to be taking some hits, and, well, being able to take them a little better is definitely going to help me out. Moving along, here is where I would normally rush the dragon and get in past its fire before it could fully wake up, but that's not going to work out as well this time because we've got a red phantom blue sentinel waiting for us. Go ahead and knock him back a bit before he can close the distance. Ooh, little bit of armor on that halberd swing. Interestingly, we get a token of fidelity for it. Now then. My normal approach of, again, charging the dragon before it can completely raise its head up and get a fire blast off isn't going to work out because it's already alert. It gets, uh, alerted to your presence as soon as you top the stairs. So I spent a few moments thinking about how I was going to approach it. Looked around my shields a little while to see if I had something with decent stability and decent fire defense. Of course, the... 
Tower Shield or Germ Shield would certainly fit the bill, but I no longer have the strength to wield those. Can't rely on my old standbys. I kind of linger on some of the shields with good fire defense here, but... Decide I'm sacrificing too much stability, and I'm just going to go with, with it with the equipment I have. But I'll shore up my fire defenses a little bit further. By popping myself a red burr, I do believe. I'm going to want to have the sword in good condition first, too. Excuse me, an orange burr. Not quite red. We're going to have to take the first barrage right on the shield, which quickly breaks our stability. But I didn't actually take too much damage from that, partly thanks to the burr. So that could have gone a lot worse, I think. And our Dark Estoc is actually doing pretty good damage on the dragon's leg there. Well, I think we should be able to handle this without uh, spending any more of our spell castings. Kind of forgot how far back the stomp goes there. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and lower the drawbridge. As usual. However, I am not going to charge straight up the way I usually do. I'm going to start my approach a little more carefully this time because we can just barely see their heads peeking out there. We've got a pair of those red phantom blue sentinels waiting for us. There we go. Wanted to pull them individually. Maybe with a big sweeping weapon I'd be a little more willing to fight them two on one, but even then it wouldn't be quite an optimal arrangement. No, I don't think I'm gonna risk the Soul Greatsword approach there. We'll just save our castings and try and stab this guy down and and get stabbed in the process. Gotta get used to the fact that enemies are a little more able to poise through my stuff when I'm wielding a much smaller weapon. Dodged my backstab, but not this time. And that backstab seems to have kind of broken something with his AI, because now he's just going to start swinging in the completely wrong direction. Right off into the ocean. Hopefully this one will go with a little... Less halberding to the face for me. Criticals always help. No matter what else I'm wearing, I do tend to keep the, uh, the stone bracers on because I do like those random criticals. Oh, you've got Estus, you bastard. I think I'm gonna go fishing. You're fishy. There we go. And I don't know what it is about these guys, but that also broke his AI, and he's now going to swing off into the distance at the exact location I am not. But you know what? I ain't gonna argue. Alright, 
no help for me this time. We're gonna have to take on Granddaddy Ornstein one on one. I think I'm gonna go Pyro this time. Had to stop and think about it a bit, but there's really nothing for it. We just gotta get in there and do it. I'm going in with the idea that I will try and bait some of his combos and his slower moves like the jumping stabs, and then punish them with fire afterward. The damage is pretty good. Yeah, after those jumping stabs is looking like a pretty good time to do it, and the recovery from his combo should be another decent opportunity. Cutting it a little close there after some of the jumping stabs, he does recover in time to potentially hit us as long as he acts quickly. But so far he doesn't seem to be doing that too much. Okay, and that's all the great fireballs down. We'll treat him to a little of his own medicine from Dark Souls 1 and give him some great lightning spears. I don't think he has any major elemental weaknesses. He's strong against dark, so our hexes wouldn't help very much. <coughs> Excuse me. But other than that, I think just about everything is equally effective against him. Oh shit. And now I'm going to be looking to bait out one of his combos or slow moves so I can get a heal in. There we go. Shit. Alright. We have exhausted another source of damage, so... We're gonna have to go to the lesser fireballs, but fortunately he doesn't have much left in the tank, so one or two more ought to do it. There we go. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one with the projectile approach can work out, it seems, as long as you are careful about picking your shots. And back to Majula we go. Bearer of the What am I going to have today? Yeah, we'll go up to a nice multiple of five with our HP, I think. Spend a little time waiting the options, but yeah. More HP never hurts. I don't quite have enough for another level here. I could have eaten the Dragon Slayer Soul because we already got the trade for that, but didn't occur to me at the time. On to the Lost Bastille, I decided to try out my old friend the Dark Orb Spam against a couple of royal soldiers. And just like with the Hade Knights, it seems to be pretty effective. Alright folks, what do you say we make it a two boss fight? No, a three boss fight episode. We're going to take it to the Ruin Sentinels. And there are three of them, so we might as well even the odds and make it three of us and bring along Felicia the fucking strong. This, of course, will give the bosses an extra bump to their HP, but I think having a little cover while we plink away with our magic is going to work out better for us in the long run. Now the main elemental weakness of these guys is lightning. So the plan I'm going in with is to just stab down the first one on the platform here with my lightning infused S-Stock. And then we'll use our magic at a distance on the ones down on the floor. So far it seems to be working out alright. I'm reasonably used to uh, fighting it out with the first one up here, with Yahim. But he got dropped, and that's probably not going to be good for us. 
The Lightning Spears are doing respectable damage. But speaking of damage, Felicia's taking quite a lot of it. And I guess no one ever said she was Felicia the fucking Durable. Alright, that's one down, and that means both of the others are going to enter the fray now. And they're all the way over in the other corner, so I do not really have an opportunity to hit with my magic unless I were to try and sight it using the binoculars or my bow. Don't really have the time for that. Alright, Belclair is now down in the shit as well. And after getting a little too close to the ledge, so am I. Well, even though they are not as weak to dark as they are to lightning, the dark orbs are still working out reasonably okay. So we can stick with that for as long as our supply holds out. You can always drop an herb if I get too low and have an opportunity to do so. Belkler's tanking for is pretty good, but she's not a tanky kind of character, so that's not going to last forever. Especially at New Game Plus damage. Fire, not doing very good damage, but there's a little AoE on it, which is welcome when the two of them are close together. Oh, Gotta time my heals a little more carefully there. On the return trip, this amused me greatly. Two royal soldiers got their feet stuck in the window on this cell door here. Alright. You guys have your fun. Shit. Stuck in the window again. Shit! They're really good about punishing my heels. Stuck in the window again. Shit! Alright, this time we have no royal soldiers stuck in the window. Does that mean we'll finally break the cycle? I have a good feeling about this one. Come along, ladies, once more into the fray. Let's see if we can get Yaheen down this time before everyone goes running off onto the floor. The answer is no! Only about half down, in fact. And they're in an awkward position right now where I don't think I'll be able to hit them. Nope. Probably should have tried going with Dark Orb here, but I was just too determined to get my lightning spears down into the battle. Even though those seem a little more inclined to hit the, uh, the edge of the platform. Like so. Oh, come on, he was way out there. There we go. I brought along Resonant Soul this time, so we can do a little better with our Dark Magic Pew Pew. Bye, Felicia. Alright, we'll see how much damage we can get in before they come up after us. That's quite enough for me, folks. I'm taking it to the floor. And it looks like one of the Ruined Sentinels is going to hang out up there with Belclair for a while, and that's good for me. It would be better for me if this one would drop its shield. 
Come on, I'm right in front of you. Give me a crack at you. So the approach I'm taking here is, hopefully, to once again bait combos and big slow strikes so that I can punish them appropriately. Oh, we've got both sentinels on me now, so I will have to be careful. Trying to be careful about the opportunities I take for my heals this time, because we saw how readily they will just dive in and punish those in previous attempts. Optimally, I would like to get both of them swinging at me at one time, so I can back off and fire a shot in. Sometimes they will not allow it. Just barely avoided paying for it there. And we've got Alessia most of the way down. One or two more good shots should do it. Okay, definitely one more now. Alright, I think... Uh, oh, no, no, no. That's definitely not going to be the time I do it. Now I think Alessia has sealed her fate. Ah! Richie took the bullet for her. Now or never. And it's now. Now that things are one on one, I have a much better feeling about this. Can't pressure me nearly as effectively, and I can watch for my opportunities without the concern about the other one breathing down my neck at the same time. The pyromancy damage against these two, or these three rather, or these one, now that the other two are down, isn't really impressing me, but I've got a good supply of them, and I think we've got enough to take them down. Alright, one more good shot should do it. Oh ho ho! Nice dodge. Alright, we'll have to go to the fire orb. But that will suffice. And man, I gotta say, this felt really good. Those hard-fought, nail-biting victories in a Souls game, nothing else feels quite like it. Damn, we have all the souls in the world now. So back to Majula, and let's spend them. There are less. And it's looking like I ought to have enough for three. So we're going to put a point into each of our casting attributes, I believe. Yeah, we still have more attunement slots we could potentially have, I believe, and... The attunement stat also improves your casting time, if I'm not mistaken. We can definitely use that. And I think that's about enough to call it a day, folks. This is Un, and this is Salad, and I thank you very much for watching, as always. Stay tuned for a bit of jolly cooperation, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Today's adventures in getting my head repeatedly pounded in by the Ruined Sentinels were brought to you by Justin Carpenter, Nolden, Zangamarth, Charlie Dunst, Anonymous Benefactor, John Madigan, Johnny Millennium, Sanguine Games, Misha Van Doren, Greg Patterson, Frank Grizzy, Tim J, Lolo De Puzzlo, Joshua C. Ritchie, Jared C. Rice, Darren Chow, Sonic Rose, E.X. Potemkin, Alicia Gorenson, Argyle Jelly, Mechazaurus, D.G. Jono, Doug Russell, August Fortnite, Patrick Bellinger, and other very generous patrons. As always, thanks go out also to all commenters, subscribers, and watchers. Always glad to have you along, and I hope to see you again real soon.